Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are building a cafe. Now you do need to get together in order to build the cafe lot type as it is a lot type that came with the pack, but they can be built in any world. All of the cafes that you see in the video will be available for download on the gallery. Those details will be down below as well as all of my references. Some cafes may function as restaurants and also serve food or as bars and also serve alcohol, but in game it is important to remember staff will only auto generate for whatever the lot type is. If your lot type is a cafe, only a barista will spawn even if you have a Bar. There are many other types of cafes as well that could translate well into the game like an internet cafe with computers and free internet. Cafes are also known as coffee shops or coffee houses, which makes sense considering cafe is the word for coffee in both French and Spanish, which itself came from the Turkish cafe. I think I'm saying that right. I googled it. But if you'd like to help me correct my pronunciation, feel free to do so. Constantinople opened the first known modern cafe somewhere between 1475 and 1550, depending on your source, and the 17th century watch cafe spread throughout Europe. From the start, there were places for discussion, games and politics. The cafes would host various actors, sales pitches, and distribution of mail. The advancements of newspapers and mailboxes at each address eventually took over most of these functions. However, the ever-important social function of a meeting and performance space continued. Because cafes are all over the world, the architecture will be quite varied. Common shared aspects include large front-facing windows in the seating area, outdoor seating where the weather allows, and an overall cozy atmosphere. Again, these are common, but not necessary. The cafe is for the people and by the people, so the people of the area is what it will reflect. Let's see how this actually plays out in the game, shall we? So the first thing you need to do is go up here to your venue info or little house icon and click this drop down menu. So the first two are going to be residential and tiny home residential. I expect that multi home residential will be up there as well with the new pack, which may or may not have come out already. Uh, but for the most part, the rest of them are going to be in alphabetical order. So we are of course going with a cafe today. Most lot types aside from residential and generic do have requirements to hit. These are all of the requirements we need on our lot in order for it to function as a cafe properly. Really cool thing is you can just click on these and it'll bring you right to what you need. And I'm just going to pull out basically what we need for a basic cafe here. Now the last two things we need are an espresso machine and an espresso grinder, which you can place just on this counter here like this. Or you can grab this cafe counter which already has all of the machines on it. Um, you can in fact even change the color of these here. It's just a slightly quicker version. You know how some packs come with desks that have chairs attached? Same difference. When we're planning out the space for our cafe, it's really important to remember how much space different animations take up. Uh, most animations can be completed within a one tile or two tile by two tile area. However, it's always best to add a little bit of extra space for our sims in public lots since more than just the household will be there, hopefully. So I definitely want to make sure that a full two tile space in front of my counter is just open. Even though technically the counter will function if I add tables here, it's just going to function a lot better if we give our sims a little bit of extra space. Now the bathroom does not need a whole lot of space, you really just need a half bath, so we could pretty easily do something like this with a two tile by two tile space. That will give your sims plenty of space for their animations, even allow an additional sim in there for whatever reason, but it doesn't make it abnormally large. And finally for the tables, as you can see we don't really need that much space for them, this whole area will function perfectly fine as a cafe. However, in the interest of adding a little bit of extra space and I suppose making sure that our barista sim can actually get a around to the back of the counter. Whoops. I'm going to make this space a little bit larger and add a few more chairs to help it look a little bit more full. Now all we need is a door and I'm going to use outdoor trash. You can use an indoor trash can as well but I prefer the outdoor ones. And we could talk about windows. Traditionally because these are going to be gathering places and a busy street you're going to see very large windows at the front of the building. Plus this provides a really nice place to put your tables. Great for people watching and again this is technically a business so large windows are just common. We'll talk more about exactly to windows as we get into the other worlds, but as just a very basic like how do you need to build your cafe, make sure you have a little bit of extra space for your sims to walk around toward the middle and you have plenty of space for your sims to access their chairs all around the table. Bathrooms don't need to be anything special. You don't really want to fill up the whole space with a bunch of tables and stuff because it's going to first of all look like a restaurant, second of all it's going to be more difficult to get your sims to sit close together because we know how sims are. I always recommend in general for public lots to add additional skills and activities. For example in Mount Komarebi this Sort of little downtown area. Our lots really aren't that big, but we can take a lot of cues from the environment as to how to finish styling the outside of the building as well as what other features we could add. I'm going to start by rotating my lot and moving it in this direction a little bit. Now because Mount Komarebi is such a sort of vacation centered world, like obviously your sims can live here, but sort of a ski resort 
town. I think that having a space for your sims to sit down and warm up after a long day of activities would be a pretty good use of space. So I'm going to add a little lounge area off to the side here. Another activity that came with this pack are the hot spring baths. Now, whether or not this is traditional, I don't 100% know, but this would be a very good world specific activity. And by looking at the world, we can also see that outdoor seating is quite a bit of a theme. We've got a lot of that going on. So I want to add some outdoor seating here as well. Now let's finish up the exterior to make it look like it belongs in the world and then we can go on to the interior. In general this is going to be as simple as just using stuff from the pack. Now not every pack will have this option. Some packs are a lot more limited in their build mode selections but in general this should get you where you need to go. Now I'm still going to use larger windows because this is a public lot even though a lot of the windows around here are a bit smaller. We can see some larger windows over here though and again public space. I'm going to use the glass paint windows instead of the rice paper. At least I think it's rice paper. It doesn't actually say in here. Now because this side of our building is also facing a public street we could use more windows except I think I would like to add a fireplace instead to help warm our sims up so I'm going to skip the windows on this side and move on to the roof this one's kind of interesting so to create that layered roof look I'm gonna grab my hip roof pieces and line three of them up like so pitch it down and extend the eaves a bit next I'm going to take a gable roof piece and match the pitch and I'm also going to push this gable back so that it lines up with that ridge line. If I pull it up here, it just looks a little bit off and I prefer it there. You can get a very gentle curve by pressing shift C on your keyboard and then just grabbing this outermost little ball and pulling it up. That will give just a bit of a flare to the ends of your roof. And you wanna make sure you're doing that for both the hip roof piece as well as the gable. There we go. So it's just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of flare there. Now Snowy Escape did come with some world specific roof textures. We can see all of them and more in all of these buildings around. And once we've picked a shingle, I am going to use a nice rounded trim in as close a color as I can get to our walls. I am also going to use a Snowy Escape fence over here. Now, if we wanted this to feel more private, there is a taller fence, but I kind of like this one, so I'm going to stick with that. And again, just keep going through with what we've got from the world. Inside, we could use these tatami mats. Traditionally, when you're looking at Japanese floor plans, there we go, I forgot to rotate that earlier, you're going to see a lot of the plans are measured by the mats because they actually have a very specific size and shape that they always are, which is very interesting. And I'll get into that more in depth in a future video where we actually look at building in a traditional Japanese style. For now, you can use these as your flooring in here. However, I think I am actually going to go back to the base game to grab some wooden floors because then I can use the same floor inside and out. Um, I'm also going to grab some of these. I don't think for the whole interior. I'd like for some of this sort of a, uh, it's not shingle, what is it? Paneling, there we go. Some of that paneling to show through. I also obviously need a bit of an opening here. I'm going to use this ceiling rail, which is actually um, a spandrel. And if I hold alt, I I can just place it right on these two tiles here and then grab my column to place on either side. Now obviously we're going to have to do some rearranging here. Now to make the inside look more appropriate to the world, again for the most part it's going to be as easy as taking your little base game tables and switching them out for stuff that came with the pack. In my case I'm going to use this small table for squares which has some really cool tiled top options that I like quite a bit. And of course grab some chairs. I think I will use these chairs outside and the ones with the cushions inside. Now we'll add that fireplace I promised, some nice comfy chairs. I think another table would be good as well. And I am getting lucky here with the uh, Snowy Escape pack where it just has a bunch of this stuff in it. Not every single pack is going to have every single type of furniture that we want, but that's okay. We'll talk about that when we get there. But this pack really has so much. Your Sims do need to shower before they use these hot springs. Um, so I'm just going to grab a few showers and place them on the wall here, as well as a couple of these lockers. And now it's time to finish up with some final decorations, changing out the lights, and all the other little things that can really help your build come to life. Because this is a public lot and it can be difficult sometimes to give yourself a reason to get your sims out of the house, I also recommend adding other skills and activities if they make sense. Now, I don't know if a chess table next to a hot spring necessarily makes sense, but it could make sense in the greater context of just having something to do. Or maybe you could switch these out. Add a place to relax, perform, warm up, work out. Just really try to cover as many bases as you can in a way that would make sense. Again, in the greater context of the world that you're in. Why are there boxes inside my hot springs? 
Turns out it was my foundation. Uh, anyway, <laughs> trying to add skills and activities that make sense for the world. For example, this one, which is fairly vacation heavy, encourages outdoor sports. So having activities makes a lot of sense for a cafe in this place. Of course, we won't go before we do a little bit of terrain paint and landscaping. And here is a Mount Komorebi cafe. But what if I take this exact same cafe and move it to Tartosa? Obviously, this looks ridiculous, but why? Our roof shape and texture are not correct. The siding isn't going to work with this Mediterranean inspired world and the idea of having a heater, a fireplace, hot springs, none of this really works with the romance and wedding centered gameplay that is featured in my wedding stories, the pack that has this world in it. So what changes can we make that are going to make this cafe make a lot more sense in this world? For starters, we are just going to redo the roof, but I am going to include some wraparound outdoor dining in this space. We're on the beach. It makes sense. With that, I do want some of that outdoor seating space to be covered, so I'm going to take my hip roof piece and drop it quite low to match that traditional Mediterranean roof pitch. I can copy, rotate, and place my roof piece here, add some wood trim, some nice bright terracotta tile, and that's looking better already. Now my wedding stories doesn't really come with very much in the build department, but that's okay. What we want for our walls is pretty much going to be stucco, which you can see in a lot of these buildings here, although there's also a lot of stone in this world, so we could do a combination one or the other. This one appears to be brick, so I guess that's an option as well. If I were building in this world, I'd be using the stucco on you um, in a lighter color. Next up, doors and windows are all wrong. I want a door that has more of a rustic feel to it, preferably something with lots of glass, but if I'm just gonna be sticking with the base game and the target packs, I think I'll go with this door and complement it with these windows. Lots and lots of windows. If you prefer eaves, you can definitely add those. I would just keep them pretty small. And to help give us that beachy feel, I'm going to elevate this off the sand a bit and grab one of our stilted foundations. Of course, we also need some stairs. And to finish up the outside, I'm going to add a more local fence shape. We do have this one, which comes with the world. Very pretty. Not super beachy, but you could use it. I think I'm going to go for something a bit more simple on this one. If I can get a decent wood tone. And I always forget how much I hate the base game column options until I have to add base game columns. You know what? We need get together for this cafe to function anyway. I'm using a get together column. Doesn't that look so much better? Now I definitely want to use wood for the deck. That's just going to make the most sense. And I'm going to warm it up a little bit to try to match the shutters. Inside we could use wood or we could also go in with some tile or even a mix. For our wallpapers, I would start with the same texture we're using outside, but consider going in with a smoother and warmer color or even straight up paint with some stone or warm brick accents. Again, this is going to depend a lot on how you want your world overall to feel. I kind of like the stone. Now to fill in this space, what would make the most sense for activities and skills for this world? It's very heavily focused on weddings and stuff, so a wedding venue I feel like is the obvious choice, but some sort of reception or party area could be a really good option as well. Maybe a little area to host a small gathering so you can really make the new fiancés feel right at the center of attention. Or perhaps a place to host a small reception, complete with a kitchen right next door for those caterers that are supposed to do something, I've heard. And I'll apply the same rules I applied earlier where I'm going to swap out everything I possibly can for anything from the pack or from the base game that works with the pack that would make sense. For example, I don't think that either of these tables from my wedding stories would make a whole lot of sense for small indoor cafe tables, but I like these little chairs, so if I can find a table that works with the chairs in wood tone and general style, that could work. Or just give up and grab a small round table. These longer tables might look more like a restaurant than a cafe. It depends largely on how you prefer to play with your sims though. Now this is a lot of seating, so this is going to give your sims a greater chance of sort of spreading out, but if you tend to use cafes as more of a place for social gatherings, then a setup like this with a lot of seats would probably serve you quite well. And then honestly, if there's space anywhere, just throw down a wedding arch. As a rule of thumb, they're just so handy for when you suddenly need to get married and have to real quick romance a sim to the max possible amount and get married to get all that money from your uncle who passed away or whatever the story goes with that one. Is this facing the right way? It has hearts on this side, so I feel like it is, but I never play with this, so might have to move that. I don't know. 
I just live here. And I was like, I want to build a cafe in Tartosa. Realizes I've never hosted a wedding with this pack. Oopsies. I'm scooting the lot over so that it makes a little bit more sense for your sims to walk down these stairs and sort of loop over to these stairs. So that's a little bit of world blending there. I think it's looking pretty okay. So the last thing I'm going to do is go in with the landscaping again. My wedding stories didn't come with anything, but that is okay. I'm just going to take a quick look and see what other plants we have around here. Looks like we've got these palms, so I'll use those. Now I really like taking this smaller palm and scaling it up once and this larger one and scaling it down once to get four sizes of palm instead of just two. This is a pretty rocky world so some rocks will work well as well and sort of fill in the lot because this is a bit of an awkward size. And to match some more plants I'm going to grab these agave plants and apply just a touch of very light terrain paint under them. And now we have a Tartosa friendly cafe built from the exact same cafe shell we just used in Mount Komorebi, but we've rearranged it so that it more suits the needs of the community around it. And at this point, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. You can take the exact same cafe shell and concept, make sure that you're leaving those open spaces, of course, for your Sims animations to take place, but switching out your windows and doors and wallpaper and roof texture, like just making a few cosmetic changes world to world is what's going to make your cafe actually feel like it belongs in the world. Hopefully this helps you build one of your own or take a cafe from the gallery that you really like but doesn't quite fit and sort of transform it into what it needs to be to blend in with your gameplay a little bit better. And if you like learning about the history of different styles and how to get them to blend into the game a little bit better, check out the full playlist here. Most of these are architectural styles but I want to start including some lot types as well because the history behind how we have built and utilized different community, I don't know, words versus real life words, but like community lots in the real world, how we've used them over the years and how it's changed really fascinates me. So hopefully you're interested in that as well. All of the lot information and of course, all of my resources are linked down below in the video description. Thank you so much for building with me today. And I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye.